Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. Yes, this is part four for today. It's actually, um, the first video is kind of its own part uh, covering the Middle East. Uh, you should check it out, there's a lot of good information in there about what's going on. Uh, then the second and the third video were actually supposed to be just the second and the third video, but the third video I got cut off. Um, my vi my internet, my computer, everything kind of froze up towards the end there. I couldn't even finish recording, so I almost lost that recording, but I uploaded it anyways, and I figured, well, hey, I'll just take the time with the rest of the information that I was going to wrap up at the end of the last video, which was white supremacists reject Sikh shooting and black ops ideology is nihilism. So we, we finished up last video at the end, uh, basically talking about just some of the atrocities that are going on across America as far as a police state uh, raiding vegetable farm uh, farms and gardens and people's houses, collecting rainwater, um, all sorts of things. And um, we're going to continue with some of those things. Why Americans would be weary of what the future is bringing to them because it's all around them. And if you say something about it, it's hate speech. Um, you're a right-wing extremist. You're a terrorist. So let's see what the um, why these, quote, terrorists, a new face of terror, why would they be upset with what's going on? Not necessarily violent. They want us to get violent. And I've mentioned that before. The powers that be want us to get violent uh, so, we can, so it could play into their hands. But so far, I'm actually proud of... Uh, the people in this country because they haven't gotten violent yet. And so this first article I have up is actually the next couple articles are all about violence carrying out being carried out by the state against people victimizing them. Homestead police officer fired after women complains he asked to see her breast. This is from Tuesday, August 7th. A homestead police officer has been fired after a woman complained that he detained her in his patrol car and asked to see her breast. So this is uh, basically him asking her to show him her breasts and bra and ask what color her underwear she was wearing. Juan Sanabre, a six-year veteran, was fired in June after an internal investigation led to the police chief uh, basically to recommend his uh, termination. So these are the people that these, quote, sovereigns or sovereign citizens, as they like to call them, uh, this is what they have to deal with. When I was talking about I'm God, you know, I'm in charge, and they... You know, start talking about law and stuff like that to them. They just shake their head and they'll actually start asking you questions. So a 21-year veteran in the Cleveland Police Department is accused of uh, basically with rape. That's right. Uh, forcing a woman to engage in sexual conduct while off duty. So, And there's other people that do it on duty. Another cop charged with rape says uh, NYPD officer Arthur Rolden charged with raping his girlfriend at gunpoint. So... This is off-duty. An NYPD officer raped his girlfriend at gunpoint in Staten Island parking lot, law enforcement sources said. So, yeah, off-duty when he attacked the woman. Uh, then we have this. This is definitely on-duty. Texas cop charged with raping woman in police car. So, that's right. Uh, Aiden Jimenez Carranza sexually assaulted a woman last month in the back of his patrol car while in uniform and carrying a gun. According to the victim's report, the officer handcuffed her and placed her in the back of his squad car after responding to a fender bender last month. After all parties left the scene, the woman says Officer Carranz is still clad in his uniform and brandishing both a badge and a gun, raped her. Following the alleged assault, the woman was booked for reckless driving. Reckless driving. Never mind the cops when they're flying around at 100 miles an hour down side streets and even... Um, you know, rural routes and stuff like that, their neighborhoods, uh, to catch someone because what, ooh, maybe they didn't have a license plate, they're a sovereign citizen, ooh, they didn't have a turn signal on. Oh, and the the big one, the big violation, the big one where there's so many victims, there's all these people that are being victimized by this crime, which is having tinted windows. No, you can't have tinted windows, only the cops can. Caught on tape, officers sucker punches inmate in face and files report claiming self-defense. The 40-year-old Rico Palomino, 12-year veteran corrections officer at Cook County Jail in Illinois, claimed in his incident report an inmate turned around abruptly and grabbed his T-shirt, for which he had no choice but to act in self-defense by striking the inmate with his open palm to create a safe distance 
between himself and the detainee, reports NBC Chicago. The trouble is the incident was caught on tape, and rather than show the officer was responding to being grabbed suddenly, it shows the cop usually, or casually, sorry, walking up to an inmate and suddenly sucker punching him viciously in the face, leaving him bleeding profusely in the mouth. So prosecutors said uh, he was working at his desk when an inmate walked by asking where the officer kept inventory property because he wanted to get a phone number. So there's the punch again. I'll just keep showing it here. As the inmate continued to walk down the hallway, he followed him and told him a return to the pickup area. If you don't get back over there, I'm going to fuck you up, prosecutors alleged. So the camera caught on tape. The guy, the, this uh, Palomino, is 8 inches taller and 100 pounds heavier than the inmate that he struck. Cops strip search mom forcibly pulled tampon out of her for maybe rolling through the stop sign. So, so that's another thing besides having tin windows, not having your turn signal. Uh, you can victimize um, a stop sign, a piece of inanimate object with uh, stupid letters on there. It feels uh, victimized. That's right. So that may actually legitimize having a tampon pulled out of a woman's body. So. Getting pulled over for rolling through a stop sign is whack, but getting pulled over having a gun pointed in your face, I mean, strip search, hold on a second here, on the side of the road in front of your two children for rolling through a stop sign as well, really, really whack and probably an excessive use of force. So the real victim, this woman, says that um, she really did stop at the stop sign, and she was surprised that uh, this guy popped a U-turn, busted a U-E, flashed his lights, and rolled up behind her, thinking having cash dollars floating in his head, dancing dollar bills dancing in his head. And he says the claims that the cop immediately drew his weapon, pulled her from the car, and ref here's the big one, refused to explain why he pulled her over. So that's the thing. They don't tell you. You know, go try try asking a police officer why am I uh, why am why did you pull me over? Uh, am I being detained? And they won't give you the the answers. In fact, if you if you do that, if you ask what you're being charged with, are you being detained? Um, they'll actually ask you to step out of the car. Now, if you're a smart individual, you'll lock your doors before they come up to you because they'll then after that, when you say, well, am I being detained? They'll what? They'll try to open a door. That's right. They'll try to kidnap you right there on the spot in broad daylight. So, yeah, the two children watch all of this unfold from inside the car. So they placed the cop, uh, placed her in the back of the squad car where she allegedly sat for two hours. And they always have backup. I noticed this. You guys ever notice this? Now, whenever there's somebody getting pulled over, there's about three cop cars. The last two times I got pulled over for traffic infractions, I had three cop cars and they were treating me as a domestic terrorist. She was stripped on the side of the road where passing motorists could see everything. So I'm getting ready to move on, but we'll get to the nuts and bolts, as they say, of this event. Then in the gruesome twist, a female officer forcibly removed a tampon from the woman. Presumably the cops were looking for drugs, but the lawsuit notes that a drug-sniffing dog was never called in, and cops never found any contraband or anything illegal. Uh, that's, that's just another thing that they like to do. The, the cops themselves will actually have a little bag of weed, and they'll touch it against your car, so keep an eye on them, as well as they like to touch your car when they roll up. So then they can bust out the sniffer dogs, and then uh, they can say, ooh, ooh, as they plant the drugs in your cars. Real sne sneaky stuff. They've been caught on camera doing that, so... Outrage in the United States as a black man is shot in the head while handcuffed in a police car. So, the death of a young black man who was shot in the head while handcuffed in the back of a police car has caused an uproar among the black community in Arkansas, uh, a U.S. state with race, racial fault lines. So, you know, you can call it race, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't think anybody is making anything about a race about this big ass. I think it's a Mexican dude punching the hell out of what looks like a little white guy. But this is how the powers that be, I don't know if they're Zionists or who they are, they like to do this uh, when it comes to whites, and especially with blacks, they like to use the blacks um, against the whites. And, um, you know, the best case scenario, or best example, is a Trayvon case. They actually said it was a white guy, uh, and it came to find out that he was actually Mexican. He was Hispanic, and that uh, Trayvon actually intruded in a private community and left uh, Zimmerman, the community watch guy, bleeding on the ground, as witnesses said after he was punched in the nose by Trayvon. So, you know, I just wish that the black community would see stuff for what it is um, and not just, you know, basically go to the same people that are screwing them, which are usually liberal Democrats, to enforce more laws. But it's sad because you have people like, um, uh, you know, Breivik, uh, the shooter in Norway. You have now James Holmes. They're saying he's mentally ill. Um, uh, this this new, this late, oh, um, Lofner, Jared Lofner, uh, he's, He's actually being charged, but they were saying he was mentally ill. Um, the Virginia Tech shooter, mentally ill. And now this latest uh, Sikh temple shooting uh, was mentally ill. 
And the thing about it is, is that none of them are going to actually be put to death, whereas um, uh, a black man was just sentenced to death, the death penalty in jail, and he's actually mentally handicapped, just mentally disabled. But they put him to death. So it just goes to show you how the justice system really works. Chick-fil-A opponents stage same-sex kissing. That's right. I had two dads, and I turned out all right. So activists who are planning to turn out for this is this past Friday kiss-off say it's not about speech. It's about action. Chick-fil-A and the nonprofit foundation, Windshape, its supports have donated millions to anti-gay groups such as Marriage and Family Foundation, the Family Research Council, and the National Institute of Marriage, all which support a constitutional amendment banning gay marriage. So, again, this goes back to the, you know, that's why it's like, I, you know, I always promote the stateless society thing because then you get these wish-washy, slippery slope arguments where I don't want laws to, you know, to ban people from getting together. I don't want laws to ban people from killing people because they're going to do it no matter what. But I do see this as, uh, um, as definitely something that's worth taking notice, which is, People are paying tax dollars that are supposedly Christian, and they, according to their faith, it's between a man and a woman. So they're not going to pay to have uh, two dudes or two women living together calling themselves uh, a marriage. And then, of course, getting the little uh, tax breaks, because that's the thing about the taxes. And they divide the family, divide all this. They turn uh, charities and churches into government entities. So it's it's really a horrible situation. So, But uh, these people will support tax dollars going towards abortions. So... So they say, for me, why it's so important is I don't believe anybody should have the ability to say, I'm not a good Christian or I'm Jewish, that I'm not a good Jew because I'm gay. Apparently this woman has been with her wife for 12 years and has two daughters. So this is the usual um, modus operandi, whatever, where they feel like they've been attacked, right? This guy, the, the spokesman for the, he wasn't even the spokesman, he was the CEO for Chick-fil-A, uh, said what he said. And I've mentioned this before, he wasn't calling for violent actions or anything like that, or even legislation. But he says, you, yes, you are allowed to have your opinion, but when you start signing checks over to people who are against my community and trying to rip my family apart, I'm going to stand up. The couple. But it's just kind of ironic uh, because this is being done, what, privately. So what happens when the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is, is, uh, is accruing uh, millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars that go towards... Uh, sterilizing uh, women in third world countries, uh, vaccinating them and their children at gunpoint in Africa. Uh, that's being done privately too. But they're actually ripping families apart. They're killing them. They're just advocating a, a normal family as they as they see it. Yeah, and that Yuri Bez, Bezbrunov, whatever, uh, the ex-KGB, check out that video. He calls these people use, useless idiots. Now you can call them zombies because that's what they are. Zombies take on Westboro anti-LGBT protesters near Seattle. So God forbid if you have your own views and stuff like that, the zombies are going to come out and tell you that you are a hater and you should shut your mouth. Counter demonstrators dressed as zombies outnumbered protesters from the Westboro Baptist Church at the military base near DuPont, Washington over the week. So they launched a Facebook group to organize the zombies event after she learned that the radical anti-LGBT church would be picketing the joint base Lewis McCord near Seattle. Again, this is what they this is the same tactic. It's the easiest way to divert attention from something so hateful. So it kind of goes back to prove my point, which is if you uh if you you know, they talk about hate speech and stuff like that, while at the same time trying to advocate free speech. So if someone speaks out and it's against the liberals or whatever you want to call it, um, views, well, then it's hate speech. Yet at the same time, we, you know, I, other people, you know, myself, we say, hey, go ahead. You're free to speak whatever you want to say, but, you know, be ready for the repercussions. But that's not what they want. What they want is to deem it hate speech so then they can actually make it a, a, a crime and make it illegal so that you can't speak anymore until the only words that are being spoken are the, by the zombies. Just reiterating what their social engineers have taught them to say. So, you know, talking about weddings in America, culture and stuff like that. You have the rise of zombie wedding cakes. So people want to be zombies and they want to redefine marriages. And just like the mass shooters on drugs, Xanax defense, Utah woman who allegedly mowed down her husband with SUV claims drug-led to attack. So I think it's both. I think it's, it's the drugs, but I also think it's our society.
like the Ohio boy who was hospitalized after a four-day Xbox marathon video game, like the Call of Duty video game that reveals the villain as a leader of the 99%, so conditioning them, so that they'll join the fight against a new face of terror.